Hello and welcome back to Box of Shorts. Today we are going to be looking at the electrolysis of aluminium oxide. Up until now, we've spent the unit um, looking at electrolysis in a general sense. So, excuse me, we've looked at half equations um, and we've looked at the electrolysis of liquid ionic compounds. Um, now, you need to know about one particular liquid ionic compound, and that is aluminium oxide. Uh, and there is some additional details about its electrolysis that you need to know. And that's what we're going to do in this video. To start with, as per usual, we're going to have a few questions to have a go at first. So if you can have a go at these questions, that'd be great. Please pause your screen and do the questions. You should be writing down your answer. Pause the screen, do the questions, write down your answers and press play when you are ready to go over. OK, you should only now be listening to my voice if you have done these questions. The formulae of the two ions in aluminium oxide. So that would be Al3 plus and O2 minus. And again, we've done this many times. I know this because aluminum is in group three, because oxygen is in group six. Which ion will be attracted to which electrode in electrolysis? So Al3 plus will be attracted to the cathode, i.e. the negative bit, and O2 minus will be attracted to the anode i.e. the positive bit or the positive electrode. Word equation. If you didn't know how to work that out, then this lesson is probably a waste of your time and you should go back to the very first video on electrolysis. So aluminium oxide is Al. 203. And if you don't know how to work that out, again, we did a video on deducing ionic formulae, which you should go to deducing ionic formulae. That turns into pure Al and O2. To balance, we'll go like that. And then finally, half equations for each electrode. This is what we did in our last video. So at the cathode, that's where we have the aluminium. And at the anodes, that's where we have the oxygen. So I've got Al3 plus turning into pure Al. It has to be gaining electrons, and there will be three of them. So each aluminium ion will gain three electrons. At the cathode, I've got O2 minus forming O2. I have to have two there and four E minuses. If you don't know what I just did, or you're looking at that and thinking, well, wait, that makes no sense to me at all. No, stop watching this video. Don't waste your time. Go back and watch the last video in this playlist. All right, why is all this important? Um, so aluminium is an incredibly useful metal. This one here, aluminium. Uh, we use aluminium for all sorts of things, building, construction, window frames, uh, airplanes made of aluminium. It's got loads and loads of important uses. We can't do reduction with carbon in order to get it from aluminium oxide. Why is it <clears throat> that we cannot use reduction with carbon? Think about your answer. And now I'd like you to call out your answer on three. Why is it that we cannot use reduction with carbon to extract pure aluminium? One, two, three. I'm hoping you said because aluminium is more reactive than carbon. So instead we do electrolysis. And the way we do electrolysis here is a bit different um, to the way we do it uh, normally. We have basically a big container that looks like this. And whereas normally the container is like a glass beaker or whatever, in the electrolysis of aluminium oxide, the container itself is actually the cathode. And I'll explain how that works in a second. Um, you have your anode. And normally we have multiple anodes, but I'll just draw one to make things a bit clearer. And then this is connected by an electronic circuit to the outside of the vessel. So essentially you've got one electrode here and one electrode here, and this electrode just goes all the way around. You then put your molten aluminium oxide in there. You apply your current and you get all the good stuff comes out. It is sadly a bit more complicated. The melting and boiling point of aluminium oxide is really high. So in order to boil it, we, uh, to melt it, sorry, we change something. 
So in here, this is our electrolyte. And in this case, it's a mixture. Oh, it always does that. Stop it. It's a mixture of aluminium oxide and a substance called cryolite. You don't need to know anything about cryolite other than the fact that it lowers the melting point. So essentially, it means that I can melt the aluminium oxide at a lower temperature, which means I need to use less energy. Now, remember, the whole point here is that I pay for energy. So if I'm going to use energy to melt up some aluminium oxide, I have to pay for that. So obviously, I want the amount of energy I have to pay for to be as low as physically possible. Our aluminium is produced and sort of comes out of a little hole over there. So this is where we get the AL. The AL forms here and 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 it comes out a little hole down there. How does it form? Well, you have an AL3 plus. forming it into Al by picking up an E minus. And remember in our last video, we looked at how on the cathode, on the cathode, there are tons of these electrons. If we were to, well, we could zoom in. I won't do that now. We did it in the last video. We'd see that there are loads of electrons being picked up by these aluminum ions, which turn into aluminum and then get tapped out over there. Pretty straightforward so far gets a bit more complicated when we look at this. This is blue, a graphite anode. What gas is produced at the anode? Well, we're going with oxide. So as per the questions that we did, which were over here, we saw that we're going to get this kind of a reaction. So we're going to get 2O2 minus going to there and then coming out over here as O2 gas. And it's losing two electrons like that. Now, if we were to kind of zoom in on this, we'd see things get a bit more complicated. Because you see, the problem is this electrode is made of carbon atoms. I apologize because I should have actually asked you what it's made of because you should know that by now. It's made of carbon. And fortunately, what happens is that if you have a molecule of O2 and it collides with that, they react together and form CO2. Now, ordinarily, I'm just going to make that a bit clearer. Ordinarily, one second, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Ordinarily, this reaction doesn't take place. But the problem is because the electrolysis is done at such high temperatures, it's so hot, this occurs. The oxygen, which is produced, remember the oxygen comes from the oxide ions, turns into oxygen molecules, and then reacts with this graphite thing. So this here does that reaction. And um, what that means is that the carbon from the graphite goes off into the air, goes off into the atmosphere, which means that eventually over time, this electrode will wear away. Because if I'm taking away a carbon atom the whole time, so I've got an oxygen takes away the carbon, another oxygen will take away carbon, another oxygen will take away another carbon, eventually that anode will wear away. So we say, if we were to write that down, we would say the anode wears away as the carbon reacts sorry reacts with the oxygen produced so essentially what you have is first the oxygen 
the first you've got oxide ions and that turns into oxygen gas then the oxygen gas reacts with the anode itself and forms carbon dioxide so it's like a three-step it's like two-step process for this oxygen so it starts as an ion then turns to a molecule then goes from a molecule to reacting with carbon dioxide that in a nutshell is the electrolysis of aluminium oxide so just to recap you have your cathode which is kind of the container you have your anode uh, the uh, electrolyte is your mixture of aluminium oxide and this stuff called cryolite aluminium is formed everywhere it's not just here at this point it's formed here 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 it's formed everywhere around this cathode the oxide picks up uh, sorry loses electrons at the anode and turns into oxygen molecules which then in turn because it's so hot can react with the graphite with the carbon that's in the electrode uh, and um, which means that the um, sorry the uh, the anode wears away and over time they need to be replaced okay so over time this will wear away and you need to put a new one in so in terms of costs what makes this thing so expensive you've got one which is the cost of energy sorry the pen's playing up to melt the aluminium oxide and you sorry i read that dreadfully and you minium oxide two you've got the electrolysis itself so you've got to get this current to be flowing and it's quite a lot of current so that's quite expensive and then three you've got to replace the anodes so these are i guess our costs involved don't just say you know so never say oh it's expensive you've got to say why so you say like it's expensive because you need a lot of energy to melt the aluminium oxide it's expensive because the electrolysis itself requires quite a lot of energy it's expensive because you need to replace the anodes over time all right what i'd like you to do is pause your video and copy down all of this uh, and that will serve you as notes and support for the questions which are about to come up Okay, you should only be listening to my voice if you have copied that diagram and those notes down. And I think I've got some questions down here. We go. All right, so here are some questions. So as ever, pause your video, write down your answers to the questions, press play when you're ready. Okay, you should only be listening to my voice if you have now done these questions. And I've just got them here with some spaces between them to so make it easier for me to write. Explain why the formula of aluminium oxide is Al2O3 and not AlO3. So I would say um, Al has 3 plus, O has 2 minus. So you need 2 times Al3 plus and 3 times O2 minus. That gives you 6 positives and that gives you 6 negatives. And remember, like we said in the first video in this playlist, these numbers need to be equal. In terms of electrons, explain how aluminium reacts with oxygen to form aluminium oxide. I love these questions. They give you like tons of marks in the exam um, and uh, they're pretty easy. You can answer them quite quickly. Don't get confused. This is not a question about electrolysis. This is about aluminium reacting with oxygen. So if you've got two aluminiums and three oxygens, you've got um, three electrons are transferred from each of two aluminium atoms and then it goes two three oxygen atoms so I'm just going to make this word here a bit clearer. So if you need to change my eraser. Maybe. Okay. So you've got three electrons transferred from each of two aluminium atoms. So you've got these two aluminiums. Each one transfers three electrons to these three oxygen atoms. It's pretty straightforward. Why can aluminium not be extracted by reduction with carbon? Because carbon is less reactive. Than aluminium or vice versa so you could say aluminium is more reactive 
uh, at the negative electrodes, aluminium ions gain electrons. What is the name for this process? So this isn't something that we've done explicitly uh, in the electrolysis videos, but it is in the half equation videos. If something is gaining electrons, we call that reduction. So reduction. And just by way of reminder, we had that uh, phrase that was, uh, sorry, not redox, sorry. Come back. Okay, reduction over there. We had that phrase, which was oil rig, and we said oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So if something is losing electrons, we call that oxidation. If something is gaining electrons, we call that reduction. Aluminium ions move to the positive electrode. Oh, that's a mistake. Ah, it's awkward. They shouldn't move to the positive electrodes. They should move to the negative one. I'm not going back in the video to change it from before. I, all I can do is apologize. The aluminium ions move to the negative electrodes. Explain why. And your answer would be, uh, you'd have to say something along the lines of, they have a positive charge. So are attracted to the negative electrodes. And generally, your two marks will be for saying that they have a positive charge and that they are attracted. So that word's really important. Why must the anodes be regularly replaced? So say you've got two marks, the carbon reacts with the oxygen and I guess you could add which is produced in electrolysis uh, and then it says your second point here they wear away so over time those electrodes will wear away explain why aluminium oxide needs to be molten before it can be electrolyzed so you'd normally get a mark for saying it's a giant ionic substance you see does not conduct electricity when solid And I don't have videos on structure and bonding yet, um, but I will at some point, so you can check that out later on. In terms of bonding a structure, why does aluminium oxide have a high melting point? So point one, again, giant ionic substance. You have a strong force of attraction between the ions and the best answers will be we'll say things like between positive and negative ions and then this leads to lots of energy required to break so if you want to overcome if you want to break those forces you need to put in quite a lot of energy in order to do so in the electrolysis of aluminium oxide the electrodes made of graphite explain how graphite can conduct electricity Two marks as delocalized electrons. Which move through the graphite. Now in the AQA exam, they often underline that there. You need to say move through the graphite. So if you say move through the substance, you don't get any marks. You have to say move through the graphite or you don't get any marks. So that is the end of this video. And in our next one, we will look at the electrolysis of solutions, which is uh, one of the toughest parts of electrolysis. And I look forward to seeing you then soon. I hope you've enjoyed. 
and we'll see you at the next video.